Before watching this epic haul I'm about to show you, many people will say, well, Chris, didn't you say you're unemployed? How do you have so many comics to show? Well, let me show you why. Just like I've said before, I have had many comics that I have yet to unbox that I have here just waiting for occasions like the situation I am currently in. So I have plenty of comics, as you can see here, where I can do comic hauls and unboxings for a long time. And that's just some of them. So I just wanted to show this so you can see that I'm not making this stuff up. There are plenty of boxes that I've yet to open. <laughs> Excuse me. So I can show you comics like this. Go, go subscribe to We Love Comics. We love, and we do, we love comics. This video is sponsored by PGX Grading Services. Get one free pressing of your choice when you grade 10 with the code We Love Comics Free Press. Link in description. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the comic book community. My name is Chris, and this is my channel, We Love Comics. And I have only my second comic book haul of 2019. But the funny part is, this one probably will make the first one um, seem like just a regular kind of comic haul because I got some amazing comics here. And like I showed in the beginning of this, because I want to make sure people don't, you know, because there'll always be those few bad apples to try and spoil the try and spoil the tree by saying, oh, well, he's making this stuff up, he lost his job, and yet he's showing all these comics. Well, like I've been saying for a while now, I have plenty of books that I have yet to unbox because I've always done that throughout my history of doing this channel, just in case situations come up. So this way, if something happens, I can actually continue to make videos so I don't have to go months without content. And that doesn't help me, and it definitely does not help you. So, with that being said, I have a comic haul of about 11 or 12 books. I got some really key issues. Hopefully you'll stay into the end, prove your power viewer status or ultra power viewer status. And what that means is, if you're a power viewer, you watch a video until the end, from beginning to end, all the way to the end. And if you're an ultra power viewer, that means you do that with every video that you see of mine. So, um, whether you do it once or a hundred times, I appreciate it regardless. And there's always an incentive to stay until the end because I do a surprise subscriber shout out. And uh, all you have to do is be a subscriber. So, before I show the books, I just want to remind people that I am selling my comic book mystery boxes. These are all duplicate books of mine, so I'm not selling anything that I don't already have multiple copies of. So if you're interested in that, the link is in the description. Check that out. Um, a lot of the proceeds go towards helping our cat Luna and um, even Oregon. And he's not sick, but, you know, he eats too. Oh, and then eventually getting back to um, re-talking about moving. All right, so let's get into the comics. Now, this one I already have, but I got a second copy. I'm really surprised that I was able to get this, but this is a lower grade. This is Eternals issue number two. And let me first move the cat out of the way and position this camera so you could see it better. Now, as you could see in the top left-hand corner, this is a 30-cent variant. So this is the rarer of the uh, two books. Now, this is probably about a 3.0. This book has seen better days. It has some comic book creases. It it's, looks like it's got some kind of water stain, so pressing could help this out. Um, but I didn't spend major amounts on this book, and this book is already pricey, even in lower grades. And, of course, they haven't even really done anything about the movies yet. So I paid a total of $52.35 for this book. Not bad for a 30 cent variant, and um, I will eventually get this one pressed and um, also dry cleaned. But you can see there's some color breaking creases along here that uh, break color several times here, like three or four. Um, there are some creases here. There is a little bit of an indentation and uh, a little bit of a miswrap. But like I said, pressing and dry cleaning will help. But for the price I paid, I definitely not cannot complain. Now this one. I got before the movie came out, you know, if uh, hindsight is twenty twenty, I might have passed off on it, but I definitely wanted a higher grade version of this book, and I definitely got that. Um, this is another book that will be graded, the only major flaw. It's got a little minor bit of fading, not much, but there is a color break increase in the corner, a little bit at the end, but that's X-Men number one. Oh, one. That is the. I wish it was X Men number one, but it's issue one hundred one. This is the first appearance of Phoenix. Now they just had the Dark Phoenix movie, and um, you know whether you like it or not, that's up to you. But it definitely was not a financial success. We'll just leave it at that. 
Uh, but for the price I paid for this, I cannot complain. I'm sure the book will go down a little bit in price because we know how people are emotion-wise when it comes to collecting for the most part. Um, if a movie does well, the books go up. If the movie or TV shows get go down or canceled, they tend to go down in value. But this is still a key issue book, so it will still be able to um, level itself out after a certain point, but you will see some dips. But this one, like I said, the only major thing is right here, there's a color break increase, maybe about a quarter of an inch from the corner. Um, okay, that's not the comic. That's actually the the bag. But other than that, I mean, the corners look pretty good. There's no ticks along the spine. Looks really good. Of course, I always check the books. Um, I would say this is probably an 8.0 or higher. It will be a book. Probably I get graded. It, it depends. Marvel's definitely not going to be doing another Dark Phoenix saga, but, um, you know, who knows? It's still a great book to have. I don't regret it. I paid $191.48 for this book for that higher grade, even with probably a possible dip. I'm, I'm not making any loss on that. I think I did pretty good, and I've wanted that book in a higher grade anyway. All right, another book that I will get every time I can see it. Well, it's going to be a little while before I buy some new books. But I've shown this one before. This is X-Men 94. This is where the new, quote-unquote, new X-Men, and it's funny that um, the new X-Men started in the late 70s, or actually early, mid to early 70s. I think it's 74 this came out. Correct me if I'm wrong, 74, 75. But in that area, I was just a little lad at that point, and um, definitely a great book to have. This is one of the books of mine that got stolen years back. This is probably my sixth copy of this book. Obviously, the X-Men are not going to see the light of day in the MCU for a couple of years due to that movie uh, that just came out. And um, I think they'll, you'll see Wolverine before you see the, an actual ensemble of the X-Men. But that just means you have more time to be able to buy these books. And you might see little tiny dips thanks to that movie. So it actually does us a favor in the long run because they will all bounce back. But this is definitely a key issue book, one that I highly recommend. Like I said, anytime I see these for the right price, I would buy them. So um, this one has a color break increase right there. A couple little minor ones here. Other than that, a little bit of a rounding of the corner, but not major amounts. Same thing here. But overall, the edges are nice and sharp. Looks pretty good. This would probably be about a 7.0 to a 7.5. Somewhere in that range, paid a total of two twenty six fifty, and of course that always includes shipping and handling. All right, next up, we have a cat, and he's graded a nine point four. Orgon, why do you always got to show your back end? I'm sure as much as they love seeing you, they want to see probably the better end. All right, so next up, this was the second part to the comics I showed earlier. This is a second copy of this book. This is uh, The Eternals number one. This, again, is the 30-cent variant. This one's definitely in better condition than the other one. Um, this one would probably be about a 5.0 to a 5.5. Might hit a 6 after pressing and dry cleaning because it's got some indents and a little bit of dirt that can be cleaned up. But as you could see, 30-cent variant, definitely a book to acquire if you can get it. Um, you can see right here, there's a little bit of a breaking crease, two little minor breaking creases. Uh, I thought that was a crease, but that's actually part of the artwork. But overall, like I said, mid-grade book. But again, these books are going to continue to go up in price, especially when the movie comes out. And if it's a good movie and they end up with a trilogy like Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, this could go really far. Because remember, Thanos is an Eternal. So this is these stories are supposed to take, you know, take place years ago, like hundreds or thousands of years ago. So was Thanos a baby or anything at that point? Maybe in the trilogy, they might show him eventually and he might come back. So that might be something to consider, even with the Thanos books. But this is definitely a book to get these days, especially if you can get the 30 cent variant. I paid a total of two hundred dollars for it. Again, not a bad price for this book. It will continue to rise, one I highly recommend. Next up, this is another book I will get all the time. Love this cover. This is Marvel Spotlight number five, which is the first appearance of Johnny Blaze, a.k.a. the Ghost Rider. 
the modern Ghost Rider, because the original Ghost Rider was basically a cowboy on a horse. I like this ber version better. You know, whichever versions, whether you like the newer version, the older, or this one, that's up to you. But this is definitely a key issue since it's his first appearance. Um, like I said years ago, I had some sources that were telling me, like, probably like Phase 5 or Phase 6, they're going to get more into the supernatural stuff. So it might be Phase 5, but we'll see. They didn't have a specific... But they want, they're going to eventually get into the underworld kind of stuff. Now, obviously, you've already seen Ghost Rider and S.H.I.E.L.D., but I don't think that's the last time you're going to see this character. Um, will he get his own solo movie? I don't think so. But if they can do something with a group, you know, with characters like Blade and Morbius and all those others, I mean, even though Marvel doesn't own the rights to Morbius, I mean, they don't own the rights to Spider-Man, and look how that's working out. So money always talks. But again, a key book to get if you can get it. Um, this book is still fairly affordable. You can see it's got a couple of color-breaking creases, so this is probably about a 4.0. Uh, somebody wrote the number 22 in pen there for some reason. A uh, little bit of a, a fold right in the corner. And again, another color-breaking crease right here. But again, presents very well, so as long as the cover presents well, that's the part I'm most happy with. And apparently so is my cat. Um, I paid only $100 for this book, and of course, that includes shipping and handling, so I got a I think that's a really good deal for this book, especially when you're buying on eBay. And Oregon wants to show you his backside for some strange reason. All right, so next up, this is another book I get all the time. This is like my fourth copy. Um, this is probably the most expensive I've paid for this book. This, of course, is Amazing Spider-Man number 50. Uh, this is the first appearance of the Kingpin. This is definitely an iconic cover. This is one of those less is more. Love the power of the Reds. It basically, you know, the whole Spider-Man no more. And, of course, having a first appearance of a character that was amazing in the Netflix TV show. Um, hopefully, if they bring it back, they use him. Who knows? At this point, they might just recast the whole thing. But I paid a total of $149.99 for this book. Uh, it does have some tape and writing on the back, but that's the most expensive. My average price I've paid for these, and this is not buying these 20 years ago. This is buying them like two years ago. I've been averaging between 60 and $90 for this book. So to pay $149.99, and that includes shipping, is actually exp expensive for me. But I love that book, and one that seems to be pretty easy to acquire considering the significance of a first appearance in there. So, um... I don't think we've seen the end of Kingpin. All right, next up, another book I will get and have gotten every time I see it. This is a must-have in my opinion, especially if you cannot afford issue number 180. This is like my seventh copy of this book. And, you know, I'll always mention, especially if there's new people, because some people will say, well, why do you get multiples of the copies? And I always say this way, you don't have to worry about if, you know, you have to sell them or if you want to do a trade, you could still have a book. I mean, I learned that lesson when I was a kid when all of my major key books got stolen. I only had one of each, and they didn't steal my entire collection, just my most expensive ones. So if I would have ended up having multiple copies, the hit might not have been as bad if I would have still had them. So that's why I always recommend getting couple a couple of copies. One you could use as a reader if you want. Another one you can have graded. And again, you could use this for trade bait. But obviously, unless you're just starting collecting comics today, you know exactly what this is. Hulk 180 is the first cameo appearance of Wolverine. I did check. You want to make sure it does have the Marvel stamp. I always stress that. If you don't know what the Marvel stamps are, I have a video that talks about it. But um, if the Marvel stamp is not in this book or any of the books that a um, couple of hundred books there were, um, it will end up coming back if you get it graded as qualified. But considering that Wolverine, like I said, is probably going to be the first X-Men to appear in a Marvel movie, this book, it's almost a no-brainer that this book is going to continue to rise in price. So the fact they are going to wait a little bit means you could get some good prices and get it while it's still affordable. Um, I paid $209.25, and again, it does have the Marvel stamp. It does have a color break increase that goes all along here. So the absolute highest this could get is a 5.0. But I think more realistically, this is a couple little spine breaks here and here. I would say this is probably a 3.5 to a 4.5 range. But for that price, especially when later on it's going to just be worth even more, knock on wood. 
this is definitely a key book to get, and I don't, I cannot complain for that price. Okay, cat's on a roll today. We got one, two, three more books. And remember, if you stay until the end, make sure you give a shout out to the surprise subscriber shout out. And if you want one, all you have to be is a subscriber. So let's get the next book. The next book is another book I seem to get some good deals on. I mean, I ended up getting one of these, I think a year, year and a half ago. I paid $149. It came back a 7.0. As soon as I saw that book, I was blown away with how cheap this person was selling it and how beautiful the book looked. But this, of course, is Tales of Suspense number 52. This is the first appearance of Black Widow. Uh, definitely a book to acquire because she's not done yet. Um, she is going to be having a movie coming out in 2020. They just haven't specified the exact date yet because they're still in the process of filming. But this is another book. If you can get it, get it even in low grade. So it's getting up there in price, but still, you can always find deals. Because like I said, I have three copies of this book. Each one of them I paid under what the 0 0.5 is, and this is no exception. It does have a color break increase along here. There's a little piece, or it's folded over right there. There's a couple little breaks along the top, but nothing major. Spine looks pretty decent until you get to the bottom here, where it looks like, uh, I don't know how that happened, but there's a couple of color breaks here and a piece missing there maybe a bug got to it or something but overall again the cover presents pretty darn well a pressing might help it a little bit but this is probably a 2.5 to a 3.5 range doesn't matter because like i said i paid under what the going rate is for a graded 0 0.5 so i paid a total of 249.07 and again include shipping and handling so get this book if you can get it that will definitely be a book getting graded all right, this is another book. If you've watched my channel, you've seen this several different times. Another book I will keep adding to my collection. This is a must-have, in my opinion. I just sent one to get graded. But here's another copy of Amazing Spider-Man, number 129, first appearance of The Punisher. This is a lower grade, but like I've always said, low grade is better than no grade. If you can't afford a higher grade, what good is not getting anything? I would rather get a bunch of key issues that are lower grade than one high issue that may take a lot of time to turn around and sell. Because remember, the, the higher the grade, the higher the value, the less amount of people that can be able to afford it. So you got to keep those kind of things in mind because the more you keep your money in limbo, if you're doing it for those purposes, you know, the less you can use it to buy other things. You know, you can quick turnaround. That's why places like Costco and Sam's Club and all those kind of uh, club membership places do well because they sell more at a cheaper price much faster but this again is a great book to have there is a little tear right here in the staple but they the staples are intact color break increases here here and here uh, there's a little bit of a tear right there um, overall pressing and dry cleaning would help this book let me see if there's anything else okay so i paid 414 dollars for this book it's another book that will end up continuing. You might see a little bit of a drop because of the Netflix cancellation, but this is a major character. There's no way this book is going to stay down. Take advantage of the dips while you can because they will not be permanent. It's just a matter of time before you see the Punisher again. They just can't use him for another two years, I believe, because that's the contract they made with Netflix. But I promise you, you will see him again, in my opinion. But uh, this is probably a 3.0 to a 3.5. Again, I paid $414.02. All right. So we have the last book. And before I show that, please, once again, make sure you stay until the end to see today's surprise subscriber shout out. If you want one, all you have to be a subs is a subscriber. And if you watched until the end, make sure you tell in the comment section what this is. And it is a flashlight where the battery is dead so there we go so we have a non-working flashlight but you can plug this in so it's one of those chargeable ones so i think it's time to do that but without further ado here is the last one and don't forget also if you are looking to um buy any comics on ebay make sure you sign in and join the the cashback program because they brought back the two percent cash back on comic book purchases from ebay 
Um, if you click on the link in my description or on my main page on the uh, on the bottom right hand corner of the banner, if you spend twenty five dollars or more within the first ninety days, you get also ten dollars extra cash back, and I do get a one time referral fee, so it it definitely helps me out. But obviously, it helps you out as well. So click on that link in the description if you buy any comics and make sure you activate it. So here is my fourth copy of this book. Uh, considering some of the rumors that are going around at this point, it's all about perfect timing. And this is my fourth copy of Amazing Spider-Man 14. Now, this was one of the books that got stolen from me. It was one of the hardest books for me to find because for years I was trying to get this book and I would keep losing or the price would be too expensive. And all of a sudden I finally won one. And then all of a sudden in the past year, I got three more. So it shows that, you know, if you don't give up, things will work. But I literally spent years trying to get this book. There was even a time that I won it and the person wouldn't send it. They made some BS excuse. So it, sometimes the 90th time is the charm, but better late than never. So keep asking for deals, keep waiting for deals. Now, obviously, I didn't spend a dollar on this. I wish it did. But considering what the prices are now and what they will be, because they pretty much r rumored that Norman Osborn may possibly be in one of the Spider-Man movies. Now, where it goes from there, we'll, we'll see. Also, remember, there is a contract with Sony, so it has to be renewed. Hopefully, they continue to do that, but I think they will because Sony would be kind of silly not to do it. But this, of course, is the first appearance of Green Goblin, a.k.a. Norman Osborn, definitely one of the biggest and most recognizable Spider-Man villains of all time. Now, this one, it's, again, lower grade. It has a piece missing here. It looks like somebody took a knife or something and cut out Spider-Man's face. There's a bunch of color break increases. This is definitely a used, loved book. The spine has some damage, but there's no tears. It looks like it's just been read a lot and loved a lot. So this is probably between a 1.8 and a 2.5. But again, even in 0.5s, you're talking a lot of money and it's going to continue to go because if and when the Green Goblin ends up in an Amazing Spider-Man movie, what do you think is going to happen to this book? It's it's going to go up. So I paid a total of $609.90. Uh, the person was not too happy about that. He kept telling me in his messages how he could have sold it for more and all this other stuff. And I'm like, why are you trying to make me feel guilty when all I did was win the bid? Because he took a little while to actually send it to me. And um, I kept messaging him. I was nice about it and everything and polite. But he kept saying in every one of his messages, oh, you know, if I would have waited or if I would have done this or if I didn't do it so late at night or something like that, it would have won. And I'm like, well, you want me to feel bad that, you know, I won it? Because if I didn't bid, it would have been purchased for even less. So, you know, the seller was very unhappy, but I'm happy. And that's all that matters. So those are the books. Hopefully you appreciated this. If you did, thumbs up will tell me. Don't forget to put this in the comment section because I'll know who's the power viewers and who's not the power viewers, which means you can always become one. Wait until the end to give the shout out. And don't forget, it is not you. It is not I. It's We Love Comics. Thanks for watching, everybody. Love you all. Have a great day. And I'll see you next video. Thank you for watching my video. If you would like to sign up for the cashback program and get $10 back if you spend $25 or more within the first 90 days, just click on this link right here. If you're interested in any of my Marvel mystery boxes, you can click this link and just go all the way to the bottom and you can order right there. If you'd like to join my Patreon account, it's right here. Facebook is right here. And mycomicshop.com if you'd like to order some comics from their store. Now, on to the surprise subscriber shout out.